Okay. Well, it's Thursday night. Thursday evening. And I want to focus tonight on Stop focusing on what people are saying about you and where you are at in life. Um, as I have spoke about before, that God had healed me from my brokenness. God had healed me from my brokenness. And when he begins to heal you from things, you can't go back to the places that you once were broken. Um, that's just like getting healing from an area. You get healed, like you get you get hit by something, and then you get better. You know, you get ran over by a car. Well, I pray that never happens. But if you get damaged or hurt or whatever, and then you try to go back into that same area of which God had brought you out of, and that's not okay. Because when God heals you from something, you need to come out of it. You need to not go back in it. You need to not look backwards. You need to look forward. And so God had healed me from my brokenness. And I'm telling you, it's the best feeling ever. Um, I had spoke about that, um, I think it was last Thursday, I believe. But I had spoke on that on Sunday. I believe it was Sunday. But when God heals you from something, you have to come out of it and away from it and not go back into it, you know? And for me, it was like a period of time, over the period of time of brokenness. But there's like some things that trigger it. You know, they're called triggers. Triggers are things that happen in life. And a lot of times those triggers can send you back into those things if you're not healed. And for me, that's what kept happening. You know, um, I kept looking for ways to get um, approval of people. You know, sometimes you see friendships that are not godly friendships or basically, I wouldn't so much say not godly, but it's not where, you see, God knows the heart of people. You know, God knows the heart. We see the outside. God sees the inside. He knows the heart of, of people. So he knows what you're encountering on or what you're dealing with or who you're dealing with. And so a lot of times God will remove situations and people out of your life because you don't want to remove them or you can't remove them or whatever the case might be. And so for me, it was like, there was always triggers. Like when I tried, I'm gonna say this, when I tried to heal my own brokenness, which wasn't God's brokenness, there was always triggers. And so those triggers, you know, triggers as in, if you're broken, you're always looking for something to fix you. And a lot of times you run into situations, but anyway, I'll speed it up. So when I gave my life to the Lord, it was like, you're still looking for people you're still trying to be a people pleaser. You're still looking for opportunities and things that God did not give you. And when you do that, you set yourself up for pain and hurtness and, 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 and pain. You set yourself up for pain when you do that, when you're trying to gravitate onto something that's not from God, you know, any kind of situation, you know. Um, and that's what I was doing. And it was tainting everything in my life. It was messing up everything in my life. It was it was ruining things because it was tainted. And it wasn't of God and it was for it to be removed, some, some situations. And a lot of times, you know, you see and think that things are from God and they're not. And I wanna I wanna help somebody get free from that tonight. A lot of times when we 
gravitates toward things that are not of God. And, and, and I'm going to tell you this. A lot of times people will be talking behind your back. You know, they, they you think that they're for you, but really they're against you. And the thing is, is that we're supposed to love everyone. God tells us that he's love. And we're not supposed to be argumental. We're not supposed to be, you know, having issues against nobody or nothing like that. And basically just get along with everybody. But a lot of times God tells us to shut doors, close doors, you know, situations that are not of him. So it was time to get free from people pleasing. And people pleasing is basically you're trying to please people more than you're trying to please God. And that's not okay. And if you if if you want to please people, is you can't walk with God. You have to make up your mind that God is the one that is first in your life. And all the people pleasing things have to go because that's like old. And that's what God had told me. You know, you can't worry about what somebody thinks about you. You got to focus on, is God all right? Is God all right with how I'm living? Is God all right with what I'm doing? That's, that's the one I'm supposed to be concerned with. It's just God. You know, concerned as in how he feels and, 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 and not so much pleasing because we don't get by good works. It's by faith. Our salvation is by faith. So it wasn't like you have to do all these good things. And that's the thing. You don't have to do that. But with people, you got to do all these things in order for it to be accepted. And it's very draining. It's very tiresome. It's, it could be a disaster. And so God had told me that you can't do that. After God had healed me, and he heals you, you can't go back to those wounds that hurted you. You can't go back to those situations that's, that once Try to destroy you. Psalms 32, Psalms 30, verse 2 says, Lord, my God, I called to you for help, and you healed me. Healing is something that takes place. I remember asking God for healing over my brokenness. Healing is something that takes place. I'm going to tell you something. No one can heal you like God, period. Nobody can heal you anyway. You could try on your own, but it's not by my might, by my power, says the Lord. And so the thing is, is when you try to, you know, look for things and grab things that are to heal yourself from them, it's false. It's false. It's not real. And God had healed me from the brokenness. You know, it, it was severe. And it was messing up everything around me. It was, it was messing up my greatness, you know, and things that God had called me to do, you know, and and to be all that I could be, but he wants me to be my purpose. It was interfering with all of that. And once you get healed, as I said before, you can't go back to what wounded you or things that wounded you that got you into those, in those, and, and, and here's the thing, when people do those things too, you got to forgive and you got to love them and you got to love them where they're at. You got to love the people that once hurt you or that once broke you or whatever situations that happened in your life you have to forgive and that's definitely free when you start to love and forgive people you forgive god forgave us so we have to forgive people but once you forgive and god healed you there's some areas you can't go back to you gotta move on you gotta move on galatians 1 Chapter 1, verse 10 says, For I am, for I am now seeking approval of for am I now seeking the approval of man or of God? Or am I trying to please men? If I were still trying to please men, I would not be a servant of Christ. I cannot serve God if I'm trying to please man. He says it in the Bible. So if I'm trying to please man, I can't please God. If I'm trying to please anybody, I can't please God. And I'm going to tell you something. I had the most biggest thing of trying to be this people pleaser, and it drove me crazy. 
It drove me crazy. People pleasing will drive you insane because you're always trying to please people. You're always trying to make sure that they're okay. Are they okay? Is the people okay? Are they, you know, and you can't, you just can't make people happy. I don't have that power. And a lot of times you, you, um, I don't know, it's just like you try to please people and it just don't work. And it's tiresome, very tiresome. And I'm going to tell you something. When God freed me from that, it was freedom. Oh, my goodness, it was freedom. It was freedom. It was freedom. It was so much freedom in it. It was freedom. Freedom from trying to please people. Freedom from just, it was freedom. Just straight freedom. Freedom. And, 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 and the thing is, is when you give your life to the Lord, that's what it is anyway. It's freedom. Freedom from sin. You know what I mean? It's, it was freedom. And, and sometimes we take ourselves back into that. It's almost like being a slave to a person, to people, to things. I don't want to be that. I, never, I didn't want to be that. I got tired of being that. You know, I, I, you, know I, you have to say the right things, you know, or they, they get upset, they get mad, you know, people do. You got you to gotta talk right. You got to act right a certain way. You got to be. You, I just, you know, and that's, yeah, it's a broken world. So we have to learn to love people for where they're at besides trying to change ourselves to fit into what we're meant to stand out. God said, he told me, he said, you're meant to stand out. If you don't fit in, you just don't fit in. You're meant to stand out. So that was that was what that was. I was meant to stand out, but yet still I was trying to fit in, and I didn't fit in. I didn't fit in because God had a calling on my life. That's why I didn't fit in. And God was trying to show me that, but I wasn't trying to see it. So trying to pe please people is tiresome, it's stressful, and it's right now displeasing to God. Displeasing to God is like you can't obey God. You just it's just not it's just not gonna happen. You can't obey God when you do that. Because you're going to be going against him. Because he could be telling you to do something. And you can't do that. Because, you know, this, 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 different things. You know, so. Ephesians 6 and 6 says, Not by the way of eye service as people pleasers, but as servants of Christ, doing the will of God from the heart. So when you're doing it from the heart, you're not doing it basically because you're trying to get along with people. You're doing it from the heart. You know, you're not trying to please people, but you're doing what God called you to do. And when God calls you to do something, it lines up correctly. You're not going overboard. You're not doing things that are not righteous. You know, you're not doing things that are not, you know, that they come back and bite you later. You know, so when God healed me from my brokenness, it was like God had to deal with me on people pleasing. You know, just, you got to get free from the people pleasing because it wasn't good. Walking with Jesus, God had told me to stop trying to please folks or try to fit in, and then I didn't fit in. Um, and I needed to stand out, you know, and walk with Jesus in that um and you really don't know people's agenda when you're trying to fit in. Like you're trying to say things that they want to hear. You know, you don't know what the situation is. Like I said before, God knows their heart. God sees the heart of men and women. And you could be trying to... That's why you got discern the spirit. Because you could be trying to please people. And it's not of God. And you got to listen to God about everything. And we got we to gotta make sure that we're doing what God called us to do and not doing what others are telling us to do. I remember talking with a lady on the phone all the time. And she would talk about her kids and her life and I was excited for her you know I would pray for her kids I would 
encouraged, you know, her. I was excited about hearing about her life and everything that was going on about it, her life and everything. And and that's exactly who I am. You know, if, when somebody's doing good or bad, I'm not going to talk about nobody's downsides. I don't want to do that. We're not supposed to. We're supposed to pray for each other. And I remember just always talking to her. This was before I accepted Christ as my Lord and Savior. And um, as soon as the minute I started talking about my kids or my life, she didn't seem interested. And this went on for a long time, you know, for many years. It went on for a long period of time. And it started, it started making me mad. You know, it started building up and started making me mad. And here's the thing. When we please people, when we're doing what people say do, and, and we're not listening to God, and we're doing some things that are not of God, or we're doing some things that this is how that starts to happen. And then I started getting angry with the woman. I started I didn't get so much angry, but started getting mad because I'm like, why when I get ready to talk about my life or my children, why get ready to talk about my kids or things that my kids, I'm proud of my kids. She wouldn't, she didn't care. She was uninterested. And so it was, <laughs> it made me mad because it's like, if you're not interested in my children, because you know my children are dear to me in my heart, but it's like, those things are like feelings. God is like saying, those things don't matter. That's not something that should matter and bother us. We have to be free from that. And that's what I say when we, when we're, it, it goes with pleasing people. When you're trying to please, you're trying to do the things of the world. You know, you're trying to live the way the world is, you know. Well, she didn't care or whatever. It didn't matter. You know, just now I look at it and I say, well, you know, Whatever is going on, you know, in whatever is going on in her life, then it is what it is. If she's not okay, as long as God is pleased with my children and pleased with me as well, it's not about trying to. Well, here, you know, we had those, you know, you have those kids stories. You tell it, talk about your children. You talk about your life, and a lot of times you're saying good things about your life, and people don't want to hear it for whatever reasons. I'm not here to judge anybody, but for whatever reasons, I don't know. But a lot of times when we're trying to. That's how people try to look, look, listen to my life. My life is good. My life is this. But my thing is, is that God doesn't want us actually doing that unless he's getting the glory out of it. You know, and we were both telling stories about our children. And yes, God had blessed our families and blessed our children and everything else. But I wasn't saved at the time. So it was like I was basically saying they were good and just God was out of the equation, even though I know that God had blessed us. But the thing is, is that it was more of we were both trying to please each other, trying to tell each other stories about our families. Look at all this excitement going on in my life. You know, and it's, and it's, and it's a good thing, but it, it, it was going somewhere else. Yeah, it was going somewhere else. And it wasn't, it was like God was telling me that you don't want to get in situations like that. And so we have to love people. We have to love people for where they're at. We have to not try to change people where they're at, you know. Um, people pleasing and all that comes in all in that. We can't, you know, we have to love people. God says love those. And, and it's easy to love a person that loves you. But we have to love those even when they don't want to hear our stories or even when they don't want to, they don't like us. You know, we got to still love them. And um, some people don't like you just because simply they just don't. A lot of times people just, that's just their that's just what they decided to do and that it is what it is and so they don't like you and that's okay. God never said that if, if, if the world is okay with you and they're getting along with you and everything and you're not they didn't even like Jesus. Jesus was hated. You know, the world is against God. There's a lot of times that the world is against God. If it's against God, then it, it, it's the truth. And so a lot of times we're not gonna be like, but a lot of times we try to fit in. You know what I'm saying? And fit in, I wanna fit in, I wanna be a people people pleaser and you can't do that it's just like you you spread the word the gospel you tell what god wants you to do you you're walking in your purpose and you're doing what god called you to do but a lot of times people want to be light and it's it's just not that way once you decided to pick up that cross and walk with jesus and follow jesus you will be hated you will be persecuted you will be disliked that's just how it, that's just how it happens and um god's got you and and God had to get me prepared for something. He was, he, he, he's letting me know I'm getting you prepared for something. So when you're not liked or when you're not approved of, it's okay because when you're, when you're spreading the gospel and you're walking and God begins to enlarge your territory, you're going to go to places that people don't even want to hear the word. 
They don't even want to hear the gospel. Let no one spread it. You know, they don't even want to hear it. So it's like you're going to be persecuted. And if you can't handle that, then this isn't the, this isn't the area for you. And the thing was is that um, I decided that, that, you know, that if I'm hated, I'm hated because I'm walking for Jesus. But at the same time, when I was saying that, I was still trying to people please. And God was saying that don't it don't mix. You can't do that. You can't people please and also walk with me. I'm first. That's what God was telling me. And everything else has to come last. And that's exactly how it has to be. And um, I got set free. Yeah, I got set free. And um, God had told me he was getting me ready for something great. And um, be, not being accepted would be something that I would be, be going through. And everybody is not going to like you or be happy for you. And to be honest, that's a part of life and it's a part of ministry. It's a part of the ministry. And um, and it was really actually to a point that it would drive me crazy that people would, um, they would be mean, but God told me to just pray for them and to wish them to wish them well, but carry on, carry on with your cross and follow me. You know, and keep walking with keep walking with Jesus. If, you know, um, a lot of times people don't want to hear what you gotta say. But there's always going to be that one person. If I can get through to one person or two or three, and then that person gives their life to the Lord, and then that person tells somebody about the gospel of Jesus, and then that person tells, you know, it's just like you won't be like, a lot of times people won't want to hear your message. People won't want to hear you talk about Jesus. We're in a world now where everybody's, you know, more thinking about how they're going to survive, how they're going to make it. But Jesus is the only way of how you can make it. There is no other way. When that check runs out, that stimulus check or anything else runs out, you still got to depend on Jesus. When everything else is against you, you got to depend on Jesus. You got to trust God. He knows how this is going to play out, the whole entire thing. He knows how everything is going to, he knows from the beginning to the end. He's the alpha and the omega. So he knows from the beginning and the end. And the thing is, is that a lot of times people don't want to hear the gospel. They look at you like, why are you talking? You know, whatever. But God said, this is why you can't be a people pleaser. You got to come away from that. And it's also, you got to be free. You got to be delivered. You got to be set free, you know, from it. And and I'm going to tell you something. Once I got delivered from that, of not caring about what people think, and it, and it took some tears, it took some crying, it took some, some nights of prayer and days of prayer, morning of prayer, but God is able. And he can heal you and deliver you and set you free from anything, anything. And God said that, you know, sometimes people would say some mean stuff and everything. And God said whatever harm or displeasing thing they would do or try to do to me, that he would handle it. You know, God is the vindicator. So he's going to take care of every situation that happens to you. So you don't need to go out here. A lot of times, not only are we trying to please people, we want to show people that, well, we get into this, you get into an argument or, you know, you're trying to, you're trying to vindicate yourself. You're trying to argue, argue with people. Or you're trying to, you don't like what they're saying about you, you know, so I need to make it right. They're saying the wrong thing about me. That's not true. God said, no, you don't need to do that. We're not supposed to do this. It says it in the Bible that we're not supposed to be quarrelsome, quarreling, quarrelsome, and troublemakers. We're supposed to be peacemakers and loving people. Love your enemies. And that's why I said it. it's easy to love somebody that loves you, but can you love your enemies? Can you love the people that start trouble with you? Can you love the person at work that always tries to tell the supervisor about you? I mean, anything. Can you love the, the next door neighbor that lives next door and lets their dog bark all night long? Or can you, <laughs> I can go on and on and on. These are things that we deal with in the world. Can you love the person that cuts you off in traffic? You know, the thing is, is that we can try to fit in. But the way God says, the way you fit in is that you love. You love and you really still ain't going to fit in after the fact. Because everybody, you're talking about a broken world. This is a broken world. A lot of people are broken. And unless they get healed and, and fixed by God, there's nothing in this world that can fix brokenness other than Jesus. That's it. Nothing else can fix it. And, and now it's like everybody's, a lot of people are worried. They're scared. They're afraid. They're everything. And so people want hope. And Jesus is the hope. Yep. Jesus is the hope. Jesus is the hope. So you got to love them and keep it moving. Love people. 
spread love. This is about love. And a lot of times people are not going to act like they love you in this world, seriously. And now what kind of times we're dealing with now, a lot of times people are not going to show love. They're going to be showing some hate. They're going to be showing some get out my way. I just want to, you know, deal with my life. I don't got time. A lot of people in the last days, there's going to be people lovers of themselves. We see that. People are just going to care about their own uh, their own lives and not yours. They're trying to step over top of you to get to the next thing. They don't care. Get out of my way. I don't care. Is it godly? No, that's not. That's not what God looks like. But at the same time, are they walking with Jesus? I don't know. But I know we can only worry about our fix ourselves. We can only fix ourselves. And we're supposed to show love. But people pleasing is going to get you in tr trouble. It's, a, it's different to love somebody versus you trying to please them. Because at the end of the day, if they're not, if you do something and they're not pleased with you, and it, then that's going to do something to you inside. So you can't please them. You can only love them where they're at with God's love. And so God had to show me that there were people who didn't even like me and I couldn't see it. And the thing was is that I was actually sowing. That's like you're nearly sowing seeds somewhere that they don't need to be sowed and you're casting your pearls before the swine. God had to start uh, showing me. And I prayed. And I asked God, is there people that I'm even around that don't even, they're talking about how my back and talk about me bad, which is something that's going to take place. But at the same time, when God heals you from something, you can't go back in that same area. you got to come away from it. Because then you get, you get all messed all up. And I'm telling you, you can't hear from God when you go through that type of stuff. you got to come away from it. And so God had to show me, love them, but you got to come away. Because you got to walk with Jesus. you got to pick up your cross and follow me. And you can't be over here, you know, trying to, still trying to please people. And, they don't even, and they're not even, you know what I'm saying? They're not even listening. Once you plant the seed, you sow the seed, God does the watering, you move out. Yeah, you move out. You can check on them if you want to, but you move out the way. You've got to get to a point that you are not pleasing men, people. You're not pleasing people, but you're pleasing God. Proverbs 16, verse 7 says, When a man's ways please the Lord, he makes even his enemies to be at peace with him. So when you are pleasing God, God will make, will make your enemies be at peace with you. Seriously. So those same people that was talking about you or saying whatever to you, you know, God can actually make them be at peace with you. Where they'll be coming back and trying to, you know, they want to know about Jesus. You can lead them to Jesus. By the way, you know what I'm saying? You're living for God and you're doing, you're pleasing God. You're not trying to please them because that's never going to work out. But pleasing God will. So you could draw them to Jesus or they make a peace with your enemies. So that's how that goes. That's why God knows how it's going to play out. That's why he says, please me. Don't please, don't try to please people. Because if you try to please people, it's not going to work out for you. Actually, it's going to turn bad for you. You know, because you're going to get your feelings hurt by trying to please people. Because you can't. You just can't. Because they can wake up in the morning and just decide, I'm going to treat you like crap. And then you're like, oh my goodness. I was just pleasing them yesterday. You know, or I was just was being nice to me yesterday. And now I got to work extra hard to please them. You know, whatever the case might be, and you see them at work or whatever, and they don't just broke, woke up on the wrong side of the bed. And basically, they're not, they decided they're not going to treat you correctly today at work or wherever. God had to deliver me from it. People pleasing. I thank God because I'm not where I need to be, but I thanks be to God I'm not where I used to be because I used to be very, very a people pleasing person. You know, just straight ple pleasing, pleasing people. And it started from a young age, you know, I, um, a lot of times people pick it up from when they're quite young. They pick it all the way up to where they was trying to please their parents. You know, and I remember always trying to please um, my parents, you know, and, and they loved me and everything else. But it was like I over was trying to be an overachiever, I believe. That's what they call that, kind of. Yes. And the thing is, is that that can turn into as you get older, you're doing the same thing over, over, you know, you, you, you're, you're, you're happy and everything else, but you're people pleasing. It turns into people pleasing. And you have to be delivered and set free from it. And 
Mine was just all the brokenness and everything else all involved and everything else. And then God said, you know, he's, 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 he's changing me. He's just changing me. Every, I'm just, I'm so in love with God. It's like he's just changing me. You know, he healed my brokenness. And I work, he worked with me with the people pleasing. And it's just more and more and more. And I'm going to just tell you something. God can heal you from anything, anything. Anything that you're going through, there's nothing that's too great for God. Nothing's too great for God. I mean, there's some things that I that I went through and that I've been through, and it's just like now it's like God is beginning to show me just glimpse. He don't show you the whole thing because he, you know, he, we wouldn't understand it. It blow our mind. We can't. He's not going to show us everything what's going on, but he showed me glimpse, visions of different things that is going to take place, you know, in my life and. And, and in other people's lives. And it's just like those things, it's like, but you have to get, he has to heal you from different things or you'll blow it. You, you can't go into those areas being broken. You can't go into those areas people pleasing. You can't go into those areas with hatred in your heart. You can't go into those area, areas where I don't like that person or, you know, I'm not going to help nobody or you, you, you're bitter or you're mad, angry. There's things that God will can't give you because you're going through some things that you won't be set free from. And a lot of times we feel like, well, I just don't like that person. I just don't like them. But God said that's not how we're supposed to act. Now, he'll bring you out of situations, but the people that he brings you away from, you can't hate them just because he brought you away from them. You can't be like, well, I don't like them. I hate them. God says do not, do not hate. You can't hate. Now, there could be some people that's just not there. It was a part of your journey at one time. And those, that, was, that was a part of your journey, your life, but now they're no longer there. But that don't mean because it ended wrong, well, I just can't, yeah, I just can't stand them. That's, that's, you can't do that. Or I don't like them. Or I just, you can stop your blessing. You can stop your progress. God wants to give you something, but he can't give it to you because you won't let that go of what they did to you. You won't let it, you won't release it. So you're holding on to it. You're holding a grudge. You're, you're mad. You're angry for whatever reason. And God is saying, I need you to, I need you to forgive them. It, and, and I'm going to be honest, it wasn't that bad. And if you really think about something, somebody made you mad, you know, I mean, there's some things that people have done that's really bad, you know. But at the end of the day, God says forgive. We have to forgive. And it has stopped you from getting into heaven. Because that's the greatest gift. The greatest get, uh, great, get gift is love. God is love. And if we say we, we don't love our brother, but we love Jesus, we haven't even seen God. We haven't even seen it at all. But you say we love him, but we don't love the brother that we see. We see him with our eyes, but if we don't love him, we couldn't love, our, we couldn't love God. There's no way. And it says it in the Bible. You know, you can't love God and hate your brother. And so God says to forgive. And a lot of times God is trying to get us to areas in life, but we can't get in them because you know, and that's the thing, if he showed you everything, your whole life mapped out, is you're not ready for it. And he, he needs our participation, as in forgiving people, getting prayer. If, you know, sometimes people do so much to you that it wounds you really bad, but you still got to forgive them. And that's prayer, fasting. You know, it's, God can do anything. If you believe the size of a mustard seed, faith, because anything you ask for, if God gives it to you, you know, if you accept Christ as your Lord and Savior, he has promises. So, but you have to believe that he, that he will. You have to believe that God will. Salvation is through faith. You have to believe that there is a God through faith. And if you, you can't please God by works, your good works, well, I'll give out cookies. I'm going to do this. I'm going to do that. You know, and I'm going to be this good, good person. God's grace and mercy is sufficient. So it's like we are saved by, saved by faith. You know, and so the thing is, is that God loves us, but we, he, he needs us to participate in it. You can't walk around with bitterness and hatred in our heart. And, you know, and, and a lot of times if maybe you had a back, you had a conversation with somebody and it didn't go well, you know, and you have to go to God and you have to pray and then ask God if you need to go to the person and you need to apologize, you know, because maybe the conversation didn't come off right and you got to be the big person and go and do it. Because it's all about God. You know what I'm saying? It's, 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 it, you, make it, you want to make sure that he's okay with you. You want to please him. Not anybody else. You want to please him. 
So that's the one you're supposed to be trying. That's who you're supposed to try to please. Is he all right with what I'm doing? Is he all right with what I'm, you know what I'm saying? A lot of times we walked around in life pleasing people, and it got us nowhere. But a bunch of pain, hurt, agony, and hate. And so, and that's, we can't do that, you know, so. God is the healer, and he can deliver you and set you free. did it for me. And if he can do it for me, he can do it for anybody. Because it, it, it start, it's some things start all the way from when you're a child all the way up to when you're an adult. And they get worse and worse and worse, you know, and you're broken and you're broken. And then all of a sudden, you, like I said, I turned off my receiver. I didn't want to receive love. Even though people showed me love, I wasn't receiving it. I was too broken. I didn't want to hear it. You don't love me. You don't care about me. Anybody. You couldn't love me, and I didn't know how to, I, I gave love, but if you give and give and give, and you don't receive, because you you turn your receiver off, it's kind of hard to keep giving it. So eventually you just draw back, you grow, go into depression, you know, you know, and just turn off relationships, friendships, whatever the case might be, and get into deep despair, and that's when the enemy gets busy, and God set me free from that. He set me free. Thank you, Jesus. He set me free. He set me free. But it took me to ask. It took me to give my life to the Lord. It took me to come to Jesus. I was broken. I was broken down. And, and I'm going to tell you something. You grab for different things. You grab it for different stuff. And you're people pleasing. It makes you even people please even more because I just want to get along with people. Can I just, you know what I'm saying? Can I fit in? You study trying to fit in, and then, and then when somebody talk about you behind your back, you're broken. Because that's not where you were supposed to fit in in the first place. And God had to show me, and he delivered me from it. He delivered me from it. Yeah, he delivered me from it. And I thank him. I thank, I thank God for delivering me from it. And he had to deliver me from it. And the thing was is that the thing was is that when I when I, before before I before he healed me from my brokenness, I would always pray and then in my prayer altar, and I mean I'd be praying and praying and everything, you know, speaking of the spirit and everything else, and I would come out. It's like the enemy was waiting on me by the door, right when I come out. And I asked God, why was that? And he said, well, you prayed it, you didn't believe it. Because I wasn't open to receive what God had for me. I didn't, you know, keep in mind I had been broken. So I turned my receiver off. So it's like I didn't even believe God's love for me. You know, and it was like I was just, I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. That's how I felt at the time. I'm saved. I'm going to heaven. But it was a lot of things that I was trying to, I was trying to do right like, I want to do this right, make sure I'm doing this right. But God said that you saved by your salvation is through faith and mercy. And I have, you know, your grace. And the thing is, is that I was trying to do right, but we're saved by faith. And you can't, you can't do it by works. And so I needed to know that God loved me. And he loves me. He knows that we're not perfect. He knows, but it doesn't give us the right to go and sin. You know, we, by knowing when somebody loves you, you want to do right. You know what I'm saying? It makes you want to do right. You don't want to sin. You don't want to live in sin. I'm gonna be honest. When you when you feel like when you living in sin, it, it just lets the enemy in, and you you're not powerless. But boy, you sure feel like you are, because he starts trying to torment you. So it'd be better to stay away from sin. And I'm not saying that we are living in a sinless world, because we're not. But the thing is, is that that's what God is. He gave us power to trample over snakes and scorpions. To, to have we got power over Satan. That means sin has no dominion over us. So then we we are, you know what I'm saying? No weapon formed against us shall prosper in my form, but it won't, it won't, it won't prosper. And so God is, you know what I'm saying? He gives us the weapons and tools that we need. We're armored with God. We're we always armed with the power. The word is power against the enemy any day. So the thing is, but when you tamper with sin, you give the enemy a doorway to come into your life. And start doing things that mess and then he tries to get in here. You know, you're set free. Yeah, you're set free. You gave your life to the Lord. But that don't mean that mind, he's gonna still try to. I heard somebody say one time, you're saved, but sometimes that mind seems like it's not. And you gotta stop those thoughts. You gotta bring them into captivity. You gotta cast them down, cast down the, you know what I'm saying? Because it'll run wild on you. And the next thing no, you drained. You drained just by thoughts. 
He didn't even got to move your hands and do nothing. He drained just by what you was thinking and everything else that's going to come with it. So, and that's from sin. And then we got to be careful with our eye gate, what we watch, what we hear. So it don't get in here in the heart. And we start speaking it out of our mouth and start believing it. We got to speak over our lives positive. We got to speak things that are that are positive over our life. We can't speak death. The, 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 you know what I'm saying? The tongue is a two-headed sword. You can speak life or death. And I choose life. That's what God's about. I don't choose no death. You know, I choose life because after we leave this earth and we go and we die, we're, we're going to eternal, to heaven. And so that's life. Really, you keep living. You can live on. Yeah, you live on. You don't die and go to hell if you're saved, if you walk with Jesus. If, you're giving, if you haven't given your life to the Lord, then yeah, you're not going to heaven. You have to, you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior in order to make it into heaven. In order to make it into the kingdom of God, you have to accept Christ as your Lord and Savior. But when you know that if you leave here, you're going to heaven, then you don't fear death. And so you got eternal life. That's really eternal life. And that's what Jesus had when he died on that cross. It's eternal life. And that's why he died for us, so that we would have eternal life. That's, that's, that, that's, that's, a, that's a gift that nobody could ever, could ever match, is to give you eternal life, to, to forgive you for your sins. He forgave us for our sins. And that shows how much God loves us. That's his son, his only begotten son, only. Yep, he gave his son for our sins. That's big. So I want to ask you tonight, if you haven't accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to ask you that tonight, if you have not accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, I want to ask you to repeat this, repeat this prayer after me. Heavenly Father, I ask you to forgive me for my sins. I ask you to come into my heart. I accept you as my Lord and Savior. Cleanse me, mold me, and make me into what you want me to be. I thank you, Father God, for being the Lord of my life. In Jesus' name I pray, amen. If you repeated that prayer, you just accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior. You just accepted God as your Lord and just accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior. Get into a Bible-believing church. Study the Word of God. Study the Word of God. I want you to contact me at Renewed Life Ministry. I want you to contact me at Renewed Life Ministry at gmail.com. At gmail.com because I want to get a new believer's packet in your hand. I want to get a new believer's packet in your hand. So contact me at, at renewlifeministry.com. Or excuse me, renew life ministry, renew, email me at renewlifeministrygmail.com. And that's, I want to get a new believer's packet in your hand. And so... If you've accepted Christ as your Lord and Savior, that's the best thing that you could have made, the best, the best choice you could have made in your life, the best choice you could have ever made in your life. And um, I want to encourage you that a lot of times when you give your life to the Lord, that sometimes it feels like, I don't feel, I don't, I mean, you, you're happy, you're excited, but you may get up tomorrow and you may feel like, I don't feel like I gave my life to the Lord, but you're not saved by a feel. Remember I said you're saved by your salvation is through faith. So you have faith in God that you are saved. You got to have faith to know that there is a God. Your faith. And the faith the size of a mustard seed. A mustard seed is tiny. So then even though if you don't feel like I'm, I don't feel saved, it's not a feel. If you went, we went by feelings, we'd be messed up anyway. Because we'd feel one way, one, one way, you know, one minute, and then feel another way the next minute. So you don't, you don't serve God by a feel. Is by faith, through faith. And um, that's exactly how it is, through faith. So you may not feel, but I want to also, like I said, I want to get a new believer's package in your hand. That way you can have some information of 
you know, following Jesus, reading your Bible, studying the Word of God. There are some very, very stories, some stories in here that people have went through the things that we went through. And I believe that that's why God put them in there, why they're in there. Because we feel like, man, nobody ever went through what I went. Oh, yes, they did. And some. So it, it's not a, not a surprise of what we struggle with or go through or anything. It's no surprise. And I want to say welcome to the family. God bless you that you are, that you have given your life to the Lord. And I'm going to tell you something. When I gave my life to the Lord, everything just.